Hello everybody, my name's Atley. Welcome back to my Satisfactory Let's Play. In the last episode we did a uh, basic oil setup and got rubber and plastic being created into boxes. And off camera I've just run down and collected enough to do all of the unlock stuff that I care about at the minute. I don't actually have a need for rubber and plastic at the moment except for unlocking things. That will change quite soon I imagine, but yeah, I've got enough at the base now. And then, as you can see, I've stuck another three storage boxes tucked away here. One for the AI limiters that we were generating here on a manual assembler. Some quartz and then the plastic and rubber. And I need to sort out my storage situation. So uh, my overall to-do list is power. Power is an issue. I want to do packaging and I want to do storage. Uh, and then as many hard drives as I can get my hand on because I've got lots of alt recipes I still need to unlock to do some of the builds I want to do. So for this episode, I'm going to do packaging, unlock a jetpack, and probably have a good look at storage. So uh, and let's just quickly look at power, get a power pole. My, I can't build too much more because my max consumption is close to my... Uh, coal plants output so I need to scale up my power as well so I can't build a lot more before I'm going to be in trouble or having to switch things off but without further ado I said in the end of the last episode that this would be the first thing I unlock and it will because I want packaged fuel it's quite an important one so we will send all of this stuff off to our friends in the sky via our trusty pod Milestone reached. Fluids can now be packaged to allow for transportation via vehicle and conveyor belts. Additionally, highly improved biofuel can now be produced. Highly improved biofuel. Now, I don't believe that because you've still got to chop down trees by hand, so I'm not happy with that. Uh, just wanted to quickly have a little recap on blueprints as well. So this is a foundry setup that I've done. It's got six foundries on the top floor and then there's a logistics floor underneath it that's got all of the belt work supported on some columns and it's somewhat inspired by this i think it was the steel engine that i'm kibitz made a while ago on his series um but before blueprints so i've got the idea from there but this is it's basically my design of how i will arrange six foundries I just want to show off what I'm doing with the Blueprint Designer as my work in progress. Each episode I'll do a little bit on Blueprints, I think. So we'll take all of that. Make sure I've got enough materials. Yeah, that'll be enough. And now we're going to get down to our oil plant and add packaged fuel to the little factory that we built down there. Uh, just come down here so that I can build an explorer. Transport, Explorer, whack some solid biofuel in it. And then we can go off and get to our oil plant. Right, we'll leave that there for a minute, and then we're gonna Your contract legally compels you to harvest this artifact. make some changes here. So I had a suggestion in comments, which was perfectly valid, and and I hadn't thought of this. So thank you for the suggestion. To instead of putting this petroleum coke into the sink, you can put it into coal generator plants and get some free power off it. It's not as good as coal. It's not as efficient as coal, but it does work. So I could have put some water extractors and some coal generators down and got a bit of extra power instead of putting this into the sink. I hadn't thought of that, so thank you very much for the comment. I'm not going to do that now because I wasn't intending on generating coke here. It was a temporary thing because I can sink it until I get um, packaging, which is what I'm going to do now. So we're going to change this over from currently it's taking heavy oil residue and producing coke and it's currently overclocked we'll get rid of the clocking and then we're going to get it to do residual fuel instead 
So that'll take 60 per minute heavy oil residue, which is what I'm producing from the four refineries, and will produce me 40 fuel. Now at the moment, that fuel is just going to back up in this output storage facility. And then when it backs up, it'll stop receiving heavy oil residue and it'll the whole factory will grind to a halt, which is why I use petroleum coke as a temporary measure. But yeah, while it was running, I could have been getting some free power. I hadn't thought of that, so thank you for that. And then we're just going to delete some stuff to make room for packaging. So now we've got a fairly simple setup. Uh, I need plastic. And what I'm going to do is put down a constructor. So the milestone we just unlocked gives me two things that matter for this change. One is that I'm going to be turning plastic into empty fuel cans. Uh, so that's an easy one because we can just take a belt from here to there and into that one. And then we have to change this smart splitter so that the left output is also plastic. Now that's only going to be sending it 20. Yeah, it's only sending it 20 because it's sending it to the storage as well. But once the storage is filled, this will all balance out and eventually it'll all be fine. And then the other thing that it's given me, so this is a brand new building. On the wheel, it is down here as the packager. So we will build a packager there. And we'll belt that to there. Oh, nope, that belt's not that belt's not elegant. Can't be having that. There. So when that's got power, I'll just take power from here for now. That's going to start producing plastic cans. Those plastic cans will flow into this thing, which it can then take those plastic cans. And this is a new building that can take, just similar to a refinery, can take a belt and a pipe. And then basically it combines the two to take fuel and empty cans and make packaged fuel. So we'll also power that. That, that wire clips, that bothers me. That hole is fine. Take it to there. And then now I need to run a pipe from this new thing. I'll bring it to here. Don't mind it having a slight um, gradient because it will be able to cope with that no problem. I want it to line up to that one. So back to, and then into there. And now what we've got is the original crude oil being turned into plastic and rubber, the heavy oil residue, which is a byproduct, coming into the fifth refiner to produce output fuel. That fuel will flow up this pipe into this packager. And then the packager produces me some cans of fuel. There's my first two cans of fuel that wonderful. Right, I've left this a bit of a mess, haven't I? I haven't got a resource sink anymore. Yeah, let's put a smart splitter off the front of this box. We'll do it nice and tight. And that can be uh, right output fuel, package fuel, uh, and then center output is my overflow. Breaking news from Earth. Widespread chaos and mayhem. World president urges all citizens to do their part and harvest alien artifacts. So that's that bit of it done. I've now got an overflow coming out the front and an overflow coming from here. I'll need to join the two up with a merger into a awesome sink. I think I'm going to have to use lifts for that.
because I haven't given myself a lot of space. If I do a merger here, that doesn't clip, that's fine. Felt that. So my overflow is now merging that way. And I can do another lift here. And fortuitously, that's a straight... Oh, no, it's not. It's not a straight line. Nobody noticed. Then my merger output can go to a new awesome sink. That'll run to there. So now, a little bit of a spaghetti mess there, but it all none of it clips, it all works. Uh, I've now got fuel, plastic and rubber all going into those three boxes. And any overflow being merged onto that line into the sink. So that once they back up, everything that's not backed up yet will keep flowing. And then when they're all backed up, then all three products will be going down into a sink. So, here we go. We've got 150 already. So, I want about three or 400, really. So, I'm just going to wait here a few minutes while that accumulates. And then what I'll do is I'll drive back to base and I'll see you guys there for the next unlock, which will be the jetpack. Right, here we are back at base. I have got uh, 380 fuel, which is enough. So, we're going to unlock the next thing. And as I said in the last episode, and as I've said on the to-do list, it's the jetpack. So it's a tier six item, jetpack, gives me three extra inventory slots, but it gives me this very dangerous device, jetpack. Let's do it. Remind me to pick up some motors. R&D inflated your pocket dimension and has provided a jetpack which operates on oil-based fuel for increased navigational capabilities as well as odds of survival. Thanks Ada, but I feel robbed. I had no space pod take off. Must be because it came back while I was well away from this area so it didn't spawn back in when I ran back to base. Must be a display bug. Uh, so, jetpack. What do I need to build a jetpack? circuit boards and motors so i'm going to build one circuit boards i've got here because i picked some up off the floor when i was doing hard drives so we need to go and get some motors and this this is going to be quite a good segue it's another place where i've ended up with like five storage boxes all useful but five storage boxes i gotta run around all over the place to get my stuff that's not desirable and also I've got this spaghetti mess on a bit of factory floor that was never intended to be this type of build. So this was meant to be expand the iron out. Now, as it happens, I'm going to delete all of this anyway when I've got a blueprint version of an iron factory. But that's a different matter. The problem, the, the point is I've made a bit of a mess in that factory and I've got to sort it out. So I've got to do something about my storage. But let's do this jetpack first. So we will build a jetpack. And we'll equip it and it goes into the back slot. Then body slot will be a hazmat suit for radioactive materials. Head will be the gas mask, which I haven't unlocked yet. But that is one of the things I'll unlock soon. Trademark. Because I can unlock that now. Uh, requires fabric but once you've got it you also need uh, canisters for it and you'd really need a fabric supply and I that's one of the things I need hard drives for so we've done packaging we've done jetpack we're now gonna have a look at storage so what I want to do is explain my thinking 
and then I'll probably end up building some of it off cam. But I just want to explain what it is that I'm thinking. And, and to that end, I've built a another blueprint for the storage facility. So what this is, I'll back away so you can see it from a distance, is... Oh, you can't see it because I've put a roof on it because it's going to be a factory. So basically, it's... Let me just put a ramp so I can get up there. It's a bit of a pain building without the hover pack. So I've got a jet pack and I can now fly to some extent. And you can see on the bottom left of the screen that as I feather the jet pack, it's consuming fuel. When it gets to zero, this one won't refill in midair. You fall to the ground and then when you're on the ground, it refills the jet pack. So you can't just hover or fly indefinitely with this. Whereas the hover pack is much easier for building. But basically what I've got here is four storage boxes with uh, an array of smart splitters. And the idea is that I'll have stuff flowing down this spine and then each smart splitter will send a specific product into the, its appropriate storage box. And then if I can just manage to hop, get my way over there, this will be the inside sort of access panel where I can have a picture of each product. And if I want, so say this one is iron ingots, I can come here, open that storage box up and pull as many of them out as I want. And this will be a mirror image. So this line will have the same thing going the other way. So I'll have two lines of boxes, one each side of me, built into this thing that's got a glass roof and hopefully will look quite cool when it's done. So that is my thinking of how I'll build this with blueprints. The next thing is about the site of where it's going to go. So let's just clear the blueprint designer. Empty my box out. And we're going to go and have a look at where I'm thinking of building a factory. And you can see what I'm doing now is you can feather this and fly quite a long way before you have to land so it's a really convenient way of exploring and traversing the map quicker than running i'm not even going to talk about hypertube cannons just yet but at some point i will probably when i work out how to build them that, that, i've just seen a yellow slug there but i need a gas mask to go and get it so i'm going to build a factory over here somewhere It's going to be here, right Right where Mr. Bean's walking. So if I pull up onto this little bit of ramp, this will give you a bit of an aerial view of the plot. I'll probably put down a observation tower as well. So apart from that limestone node, there's nothing else in this big area between that limestone node and this pond. There's nothing else there that's going to cause me a problem. So I intend building a large structure that starts at the bottom of this cliff and goes that way as long as I need it to. And that is going to be my kind of maybe new home for the hub as well, but certainly my storage facility and crafting lab and that kind of stuff because the area that i'm in is just a bit too small to build the storage facility that i want to build given how many items there are in this game and i want it to be a two-story building for reasons that will become apparent but i will need to clear some of this stuff out of the way i'll do that after i've laid out the basic outline of the building mr bean's gonna probably i'm gonna have to work out how to stop him clipping through not enough space that's all right i'm going to be building a lot so this is this is my line i want to be sort of edge here let's put down some foundation uh let's make it here and word align it yep i'm gonna use that as my marker and i'm gonna see what that looks like 
because I don't really want it clipping into the ground. That probably means I need to raise it up. Look. If I raise it up off that one. Now, I think if I have solid foundations with a wall, Bean won't come through. And then I'm going to see where it runs. Probably don't want it to run past here. We'll tend that way. Get rid of those. Are they all in the ground? Ish. A little bit underneath there. I'll worry about that after. And I'll go through and clear out all this vegetation after. I'm just kind of showing the lines of what it is that I'm thinking of doing. I don't want to be too close to that. But I might go another one block. And then we'll go off. And I know this looks huge. Uh, this is kind of the outward extent of what I'm going to build. And then I'll get back up on top of that observation tower. And we'll have a look at what we've just built. I want to try and work out how to do time lapses with stuff like this. But I don't know how at the moment. So yeah, that's the basic shape for now. And then I will just run around and clear that vegetation. I'll have to put a box somewhere for that. But I'll clear that vegetation and fill in the gap in the middle. And then I'll explain the next stage of my thinking. And hopefully by the time I'm done, Bean will stop walking through. Uh, Bean's inspecting my work there. Uh, I've basically got rid of all of the vegetation and paved out the entire area. And then the walls you can see at the end there are trying to work out how to use blueprints. So the blueprint I want to put down is the one I showed you just now, which is basically looks like that. But obviously, you know, they're, they're, they're snapping to a certain extent there, but I need to make sure they snap exactly right. Otherwise, you can't you can put a blueprint down in one click, but if it's in the wrong place, you've got to delete it all manually. So uh, I've got a storage box there that's full of bits and pieces that I'm not using for this particular build. And then I've queued up on the right side. My to-do list has got enough materials in my bag to build 10 of these blueprints, which would be 40 boxes, which is probably not enough long term, but it's good enough for now. So I'm going to see if I can get this done the way I want. To at least show you the idea of what I'm doing and then we'll worry about walling it all in and making it look pretty later. So that's my blueprint. And what I want is for the upper wall that you can see on the left of the blueprint above the lifts to be level with that one placeholder floor that I've put in. And as you can see, they, they kind of, they're a bit funny to get them to clip and they're trying to clip to the top of the wall, but I want them to be down one, which shows them as yellow soft clipping into the wall, which is fine. So that's the right alignment there. And I need to do it so I can see this edge. Hey, Bean. All right, mate. You're just checking that I'm doing it properly. I'm messing around with your back garden. Sorry about that. Uh, so I want it that way. Right, down one, in one. That looks perfect. So done. Now I've got to try and get... I figure if I do five each side, I've got to try and get them to align. And this is where it gets really difficult to snap these blueprints because they don't... To me, that should automatically say, right, it's the same blueprint. I'm just going to snap. Bang. Done. But I think I'm going to have to mess around with extra walls to temporarily to give me the ability to snap that. So let's turn this one around and try and get another one on the other side. Snap correctly. And I've got a four wall working height underneath this floor that basically allow me, each storage box will have a lift coming down and that allows me inside this building on this big floor to put down any temporary manufacturers assemblies things I need for temporary crafting until I've got a proper facility online. This isn't going to be a mega factory. This is a lab, but it's a big lab. 
So I'm now going to try and snap that if Bean will let me. I need to do it so I can see though. I need you out of the way, mate. Go in my way. Come on, buddy. Move along. He says, hang on, no, you're the one that's in the wrong place, pal. This is my yard. One more. There. That look right. And then if I jump up. Yeah, that. so that looks right from this end. So if I just put a ladder. Here. You can see. That from the inside. I've got a glass roof to keep me out of the rain. And I'll have two lines of product. So the only thing I need to do now is work out how to build another eight of those with them snapping properly. And I suspect in order to do that, I wonder if I was at the right height whether they would snap. Because I suspect I need to... Yeah, I'm going to put a temporary wall there. That should snap better than that in my opinion, but what do I know? No, I need another one. Yeah, well, let's not let's not be stingy. Put a few in. Always delete them afterwards. It just lets me gives me something to aim at that lets me then exactly position it the way I want it. There. Now I can take those out. And I think that's then aligned that properly. That looks good. So let's repeat that five times down this side. I'm aware that it's hanging off sky hooks, but it will have a supporting floor, wall, pillars, etc. I promise. And then repeat on the other side. So you've got to fiddle a little bit on a big blueprint to get it to line up. But once you've done that, I'm sure you'll agree. That is so much quicker than building by hand. And then, roughly, the way this is going to work, I'll just do another... Uh, you know, I'll jump down here. I left a bit of floor open underneath, because I might end up with another material handling area. But if I do... a one meter temporary floor there, with a... It may not be temporary, actually. I may have, like, a veranda area but anyway get up there and we'll have a look at what we just built so here's the principle of this there's two there's two lines one belt is going to run the top belt is going to run clockwise around the facility join at the join at the other end and then come down the other side and then the bottom one is going to go anti-clockwise starting on the other side join at the end and come back down here and then each splitter will be set to overflow forward which i set in the blueprint and then left or right depending on the direction of the splitter will send for example metal plates iron plates into that one iron rods into that one iron screws into that one reinforced iron plates modular frames rotors stators motors you get it right and then around the other side is just the mirror image of that. It's exactly the same. And then in the middle, we've now got... Look at that look. At the moment, 40. And it looks to me like I've got space, if I wanted to, to put at least another one. What's that? Uh, one, two... Yeah, just one, because I need a bit of handling area on the end for the belts. So we'll build another two. And then this will end up being walled something like three and then we got some ceiling parts and then the shallow one meter roof isn't tall enough so we'll make it a two meter roof and that can go to there and we've got a inside area that's 
three on the edges, four in the middle, but it looks smart. Oh, I missed it. But anyway, yeah. And because of zooping, that stuff's just as easy to build manually as to try and blueprint. The main thing is that all of that setup of those storage boxes is blueprinted. And how quick was that? That's wonderful. And actually, those blueprints are the reason I wanted to start this save because I wanted I saw that in the update seven news, and that's what made me start a series. So I really want to play with blueprint. That would have probably taken me two hours at least to build that manually. Blueprints, ten minutes by the time I got all the materials together. So I hope you agree that that's going to be a, a significant step forward for the series, and it'll only get faster as I get used to using them as well. So I'm going to wrap this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Next episode, we will almost certainly be doing power upgrade because I definitely need more power before I can build anything more complicated. But that's for next episode. But in the meantime, thank you very much and goodbye.